Hi guys, welcome to long awaited Tomb Room tutorial series. Allow me to introduce myself first. My name is Q. I graduated from Sheridan College for animation back in 2010. And since then I've been working as professional animators for about three years. Uh, during those time I worked on shows like Kipotowski, Sidekick Season 1, Motor City, and Sidekick Season 3. So for this first tutorial video, it's going to be split into two parts. One will be this video where I'm just going to go through all the interfaces, shortcuts, and preferences. And the preferences I like to have it set up. In the second video, I'll just show you how to animate a very simple motion, but which demonstrates all the tools, the functions, the process of it all. Bit of disclaimer, this first video will be very boring, but it will be very important. So I suggest maybe watch the second video first to get yourself a little bit more into the software and how it, how it will perform. And once you're inter interested, then come back to the first video and learn how I set up everything. So if you look at the video description right now, there is um, I have linked to a document, my Google document, and that is your reading material for today. That is all the basic shortcut keys that that I like to use and I like to change. So let's go down the list together and let's change from the default values here. So we'll go to edit preferences preferences good and let's just go down and change all the like the settings I like to have um, I'll explain very shortly what they are uh, but but let's just mostly just um, check and move on so we have the save function here and you can choose to automatically save your scene every 10 minutes or so however you set it but I usually don't use it because I uh, I've gotten used to hitting Control S very frequently, and it's something of a habit you should get into. Okay, so the first setting we need to change is under General tab, under Settings. Um, stop motion keyframe let's turn that on and under options here focus on mouse enter let's turn that on too next we go to camera tab and under tools we select select tool works on single drawing let's turn that on and in the advanced tab way on the right here all the way We'll uncheck element module animate using animation tools default value. Let's uncheck that one. And that's that's it for now. Let's go back to the shortcuts. Um I think Toon Boom also gives you an option to change to Adobe Flash shortcuts. Don't never do that. Um, even if you're used to using Flash, the Toon Boom Harmony shortcuts are way more intuitive. So let's go down the list and change a few things I like to have set up. So in this shortcuts under general, here go to next column, go to next drawing, go to previous column, and go to previous drawing. We're going to clear all of those. Because I sometimes accidentally hit those and then stuff happens and I never use them and all that stuff. So here on the right, we we'll just hit clear to clear all those default values. Great. 
and then we're gonna go down to next frame we're gonna change that to G so to change it we're gonna hit this little box next to clear and then once it's activated well I'm gonna hit the key and then sometimes it will Tomb will give you this option if that key is used by different function uh, so in this case G is shared with toggle grid I don't I never use it so I'm going to replace it so next frame G is only used for this next frame okay previous frame we're gonna change to F okay and then we'll go to create empty drawing I like to have this set up as control shift D so we're gonna change to that and then next duplicate drawing I'm gonna change to alt D and then we're going to duplicate since it's shared with the dropper tool we're gonna do that and look for recenter which is N we're gonna clear that that is it for this general shortcuts we'll go to timeline next central and selection we're gonna change to C and we're gonna duplicate and then go all the way down to set motion keyframe we're gonna change that to K and duplicate set stop motion keyframe we're gonna change to L and we're gonna replace that one uh, that's it for the timeline network view center on selection C duplicate exit group I like to have that as backspace and I think that's it for my preferences so we're gonna hit OK now that we have set up our preferences and hotkeys let's um, let me walk you through the interface so on the top you have good old save button and under file you also have save as new version so you can choose to name it as version 2 or something like that and hit OK and it will save as a different version but it will under under that one same file so, um, saving as a different version is useful when you want to make a for example like when I finish my roughing animation I'll save it as rough and then and then I'll save the next one as animate so sometimes if something bad happens I can just go back and look at what I've done in the rough so that's that there's undo up here there's undo redo cut copy paste uh, everyone knows you know control Z undo all that stuff right so no need to explain other than redo redo is control shift Z sometimes I use that up here we have play play functions so this is just a play button it plays a scene let's do it like that it plays a scene once and the one uh, shift enter is the hotkey for that which we will use quite often next we have I'm not sure what it's called render render and play and there's a bunch of options here but when you hit render and play um, yes. when you hit render and play the program will render and it will output the render video like this
So what that, what does the rendering mean? Well, by default, if you look at right here, we're in the OpenGL view. It, you look at the lines, they're all very jagged. Maybe I'll go in closer, does that work? The lines are very jagged, they're not anti-aliased. Um, but when we render it, the line will come smooth. And if you have an effect on, like sometimes it won't show effect until you render it. So, so the button to switch between the two is down here. So the one with the gray gear, or it looks like flower to me. So gray flower is like OpenGL view and the green flower is render view. Um, I never, so going back to the uh, play button here, I never use this button because what this does is actually renders every single frame. And while it was pretty fast for this scene because when we have what, like five frames with no background but when you're actually working in a production, you have this like a giant, giant like bitmap of a background and rendering takes forever and it, it might actually crash your computer. So let's not use that for now. Next, we have loop. Once you activate it and hit play, it will loop infinitely. So shift enter to play and stop that. On the next to it, we have sound. Uh, if you want to hear sound, you activate that, and if you have sound, it will play. And you know, sometimes like when when there's no audio in your scene, and when you can't hear the audio in your scene, like just check this first, see if it's activated. But just activating it won't play. It will only play the sound. Hmm, let me rephrase this. You will only hear the sound when you hit play, if you have that activated. If you want to hear the audio when you're scrubbing through, you need to activate the next button, which is scrubbing. Then that way you can actually use it to do lip syncs. Um, this is like, I think it's like the frame information. Yeah. Uh, let's not get into those. I don't really look at that or use it. Okay, on the next tier, I think this is like the workspace. Um, so you can s set a different workspace. I think if you hit different things and like different, uh, oh shoot. That's okay, we're, we were at default anyway. It will align like a different tools and places. And this is Workspace Manager. I think you can like save your custom workspaces and do it that way. Play around with it, it's, it's pretty simple. And um, let's see. So under Windows Toolbars, uh, I'm going to activate the Advanced Animation tool, which will give you these on the left hand side, or maybe I think default is on the right hand, but I just moved it down here. So these are, these are the tools which you can also use it to animate. Uh, First one is translate. So if you select like a part, then it gives you this kind of handles, much like a 3D, right? Um, so if you, you can just um, drag, drag the parts around, or if you use the handles, then this is only works horizontally. This only works vertically, and so on. Next is rotate tool. Um, self-explanatory you can just move the pivot around and rotate it that way uh, one hmm maybe I'll, I'll explain it right now um, uh, in in Toon Boom 
usually you work with this tool right here when you're animating it's called transform tool on the left hand side and it gives you all the functions you can translate you know uh, scale skew and rotate and this blue circle is the pivot point and every every hierarchy that I have set up here has different pivot point which makes total sense um, but one thing is right now is pivot to the neck which is pretty good but then I can choose it to pivot to center of the face and if in flash once you move the pivot it's moved there forever but in Toon Boom by default I don't I don't know if you can even change it but if you move around play with the t pivot in this transform tool uh, once you click out of it and reselect it again pivots right back at the cent uh, base of her neck now if and it does happen like for example if the builder forgot to move the pivot to the neck or something for example let's say if I select the head and the neck but then pivot is way here well I mean I can temporarily move it but once I reselect it again it's back here again so how do you permanently remove it or uh, permanently move it to the base of her neck that's that's where rotate tool comes in handy so if you move pivot in the rotate tool is permanent so that's something that you might want to do before you start your scene um, you can do during the scene but it ends up screwing up a lot of things moving on we have scale tool on the up here it's pretty self-explanatory oh shoot what's going on <laughs> yes Ooh. yep I don't really use it uh, skew tool and these two I'm not quite sure <laughs> moving on we have palette over here if they have a build set up in such a way uh, I have two two palette options here for the green shirt and the pink shirt and if you select it and underneath there's a bunch of these uh, color pools or what's the correct name I think they're just called color but I'll call them swatches no they're not swatches uh, let's just say the color so this green it's called shirt fill I uh, you can easily change it to different color and bam instantly it changes for your entire scene so that's pretty useful Um. Yeah, that's that's all I'm gonna say for now. Next, tool properties. This shows the property of the tool. So if you're in a brush mode, if you wanna change the uh, size of the brush, this is where you do it. Um, there are other ways to change the brush size, but I don't really use it, and maybe I'll get into it later. Library. This is where you look at to see the which drawing you have selected so let's select Katie's eye and over here in the drawing substitution we can see the all the different body parts that I have drawn mm -hmm. once you select a part uh, you use square, square brackets to browse through very useful or if you know the name sometimes these will be named or these are numbered for now that's by default let's say if I know for certain if I want like number six and bam you know so you can do that too 
but usually you know, just go through it like so that's the way you do it square brackets okay down here we have timeline um, so this is the length of the scene this uh, red bracket here you can change it however you want and this is a red this red line is the well I mean that's where your current frame is <coughs> this is and there are a bunch of elements here this drawing this is BG really this white is the white and we have KD right here what else can one more can I say about the timeline um, not much for now so let's move on okay down here we have this is what you use to animate uh, onion skin that's everyone knows what onion skin is right it shows the um, before and after what the frames will look like so let's move our first frame here second frame here <laughs> it's kind of like that okay okay this is something important okay so, um, so this transform tool is what you're going to use 90% of the time and I showed you before you just select and if you push B it's gonna go up the hierarchy of the build um, this may be very different depending what the build setup is like if I start with the mouth, goes to the face, head, neck. If I start with the eye, iris, the eye, eye with the brow. Next one, <laughs> next step for this hierarchy is her freckles, and then the face, and then the head, and then the neck. Very useful. Uh, if you go up the hierarchy is B as in bear and to go down the hierarchy is shift B so with this transform tool as I showed you before you can move with um, you can move grabbing by any parts of the uh, the drawing or, or sometimes it doesn't work as well so if you grab the center that's the sure thing if you grab the corner, that scales. Same with the side. If you grab the um, any of these lines, then you can skew. If you grab just outside of the corner, that's rotate. And if you hold shift while you're scaling, Uh, it scales proportionally okay next this is very important um, I'm not quite sure what the right terminology is but this animate button if it's turned on whatever you do will only affect your current frame right so if I tilt her head back back like this the next frame it didn't affect the next frame now let me show you if I turn it off it becomes all keyframes mode it's easily indicated by this pink shade that way you know you're moving the whole thing across your entire scene what I mean by that let's see let's tilt her head again in this mode and go to the next frame her head, head is tilted. Her head is tilted here. 
Let's give it a little bit more ex extreme example. If I move her head over this way. Oh, yeah, her head for all the other frames has moved. So it's very useful if you're already like finished the scene or something. You just need to scale the scale Katie down. You you hit all keyframes mode and this is how you do it. Otherwise you might end up like you know, no one no one wants to be doing this, right? And it's not quite the same. Okay. And up here we have tools that are mainly used in the drawing mode. So Toon Boom has two modes. This is animate mode with when I select the uh, transform. This is usually, you know, when I just focus on animating. But when I want to draw a next a different part, we go into the drawing mode. So I'll select our arm, and any of these selecting any of these will go will put you into a drawing mode. So first one we have select tool. It selects things. Next, we have Contour Editor. I hit K to show strokes. And with the Contour Editor, once I select anything, it will show all the different points that I can manipulate. You can create your own by holding Control. And I can just push and pull. Not really recommended for uh, doing a big, big changes, but like if you want to add a little subtlety to it, and if you, I think if you double click on a point, you can actually play with the uh, bezier curve. Next, we have brush tool, trusty old brush tool. Let's go to tool properties and change the size. Brush tool. And we have pencil tool just below. Oof, so thick. All right. From on the outside, they look pretty identical. Um, but if I turn on show, if I show strokes by hitting K, you can see they look quite different. So brush tool is defined by hmm. Uh, well, it's, d it's defined by like just your as outer edges, and pencil is defined by this. It's a center, this uh, busier curved line. Um, the difference between the two, I I most mostly I work with the brush tool. With the brush tool, you can kind of delete and get the fine. It, it gives you a little more control. Whereas pencil tool, if I go, if I don't, as long as I don't touch the line, it doesn't really affect anything at all. It doesn't delete or anything until, you know, I actually have to manipulate the center line. So with the pencil tool, if you select it, you go down the tool properties and you can change. You can change it, change how, how much it tapers, how thick it will be in the thickest side. Um, it has its uses. So those are the difference. Text, we can write a text. Mm, eraser tool, erases. Uh, if you look at the reading material, uh, it lists all the base default uh, hotkeys. So uh, let me give you an example. Alt B is the brush tool, and Alt E is the eraser tool. But if you just hold E, 
it will temporarily change to eraser and if once I let go oh, once I let go it will become brush as provided that you're in the brush in the first place um, it's very useful to use this type of shortcut keys because it will it will save so much time so that's the eraser tool uh, next we have paint tool so let's, uh, let's draw a basic shape here paint tool it paints uh, alt I is the default but if you hold down this paint tool button there's it gives you slightly different options uh, paint unpainted repaint and unpaint unpaint it just simply unpaints everything. Um, re repaint it repaints the line. So, for example, let me give you a good example here. Let's say I have this weird shape like this. Sure, heart. If I just use a paint tool to paint, this is a quick way to paint. You just select like around it and it will paint everything which is which is not what you want you can select it like this too but if you just wanna paint the lines you can select around it and you just paint the lines it is faster alternative to doing this next we have paint unpainted so it paints everything all the closed spaces it will paint but why use that over regular paint sometimes you will get into situations where you have to deal with some weird shape like so and if you use a paint tool if I want to fill all this weird space yeah that takes quite a long time especially if you are doing frame by frame animation yeah, that's not very smart. So we go to paint on painted tool and then just draw a circle around it and there. And then with so that's that. And under paint there's something called stroke tool. So if I just draw a line with stroke tool, I uh, I get a warning. You made a stroke tool to the drawing, but it will not be visible unless you activate stroke show stroke tool from view menu. Never show me this message again, please. So what that means, stroke tool is invisible. So if I turn on show stroke tool with K, we get this type of shape. And I can just maybe fill that however I want. And this is what I get without the line. So that shows uh, stroke tool is Alt V. It's useful sometimes um, when you're just drawing and uh, let's give you a practical real thing. Uh, let's say I'm drawing like a hand, terrible looking hand. And if I want to close the wrist like that. that's how it works and it's a good way to see, see what I did there I had obvious gaps but I hold V and then I just close it and then I can just fill that in without switching back to brush tool trying to close that and it depending on situation but let's see oh, there's a line tool it makes a line you can go into preferences 
rectangle and just change change that pretty easy simple now we're gonna show you my best my favorite tool is the cutter tool so right now I'm in brush and let's go back to heart <laughs> and um, it's not very pretty is it so I can choose to go to eraser tool and do that but you know I made a mistake and it's not quite perfect the easiest way to make it perfect is go to cutter tool which is alt T or is under the select tool is under here too so alt T gives me gives me the cutter tool and then if I want to get rid of this little thing here I just swipe it across bam bam and bam and here we have it perfect and lastly eyedropper tool um, which is alt D by default But, but remember we set Alt D to create duplicate drawing. So, we're, and there's no real reason to ever permanently switch to eyedropper because eyedropper you just want to select the color and move on. So if you're in a, any mode, right? Any mode, you just hold D and then it gives you the, the dropper. So. If I want the heart to be, let's say, that shirt blue, then as I'm holding D, I select it, and then because I'm in the paint yeah, paint mode, I can do that. Or maybe that white from the pants or the skin color. Simple as that. <laughs> now before we end this video I'll explain one more thing which is remember when we went into preferences we ticked on focus on mouse enter so let's take a look what that is I'm not quite sure if you can see it but if I have a mouse over on this camera view there is a red line around it and if I go over here now there's a red line around this box here and if I move down here and so on down here and then in the timeline and so on so if you remember <coughs> for example show stroke was set to K but you know what else was set to K it's is um, the uh, in between what's that called S stop motion keyframe is was also set to K so now how the program differentiate between the two is uh, the show mouse enter so without that activated um, you would actually have to click on different windows for them to activate but with this I can just mouse over and if I hit K down in the timeline this would mean this the stop motion keyframe but if I do it up here it's the show strokes tool so that's how that works ah one more thing um, so in this camera view right here if you look at the bottom I explain open geo view render view and over here we have if we select this camera icon there's a bunch of neat things like safe area uh, a bunch of other options but there's also show strokes too we can turn on and off here and camera mask 
So if you hit that camera mask, it will just put a black around your uh, scene so you can have better look at what the scene would actually look like. For example, if Katie was, if the scene was shot like this in a mid shot, and I can like animate her like such, but sometimes like I don't I don't get distracted as much if I just put a camera mask over it. All right, I think that's it for the interface. Mm hmm. Yeah. So we'll continue on to the next video. And there we'll actually show you how all these work together. And plus there's so much more to show you. But it will make more sense if I actually use them properly, right? So, thank you. And let's move on.